Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. So today I wanted to do my second check-in video for the Nonfiction Reading Challenge. So if you don't know what the Nonfiction Reading Challenge is, it is a year-long challenge that I created for myself to uh, promote me to read more widely within Nonfiction Try New Things. Uh, so I will link the announcement video that I've done for this challenge and most of you are probably familiar with it by now. Um, but I did my first check-in video in March or April, so for the first first quarter of the year and I thought today that I would do my half half year point uh, check in to talk about briefly talk about the books that I've read for the challenges so far since the last time and also talk about some of my reading plans for the upcoming months um, in terms of the nonfiction reading challenge. The one that I've uh, finished the most recently is Swell, a water biography by Jenny Landreth. I'm not going to go into any details but this is a book about the history of women swimming and it is the book that I read for the sports nonfiction challenge which I actually did a full video about talking about sports nonfiction that I've read um, or that I recommend and also some uh, some that I really want to read um, and I've also talked about this book in connection with uh, a full video talking about swimming uh, books on swimming so yeah so that's a, a very recent read the next one I have uh, is I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. I read this in April. Prior to reading this book, I wasn't sure if I was going to be using it for uh, the challenge of reading about something extraordinary or ordinary. The reason I thought that it might fit with the ordinary challenge is that it's about death. Uh, death is obviously something that we all have to deal with at some point or, or other, uh, so I thought that that would work, but it is the, the book itself is near-death experiences and the fact that one person has so many and many of them are so outrageous it feels more extraordinary than ordinary so I've, I've picked this for the extraordinary challenge uh, and this was fantastic definitely one of my favorite nonfictions that I've read this year and lastly for the uh, books that I've read since last time is uh, The uh, Extraordinary Life of a Victorian Genius by Linda Lear, which is a biography about Beatrice Potter. This book I picked up for the uh, challenge of reading a book or a biography of an inspiring woman. And I did a full video again talking about several books on inspiring women um, that I read or recommend or again want to read. So those are the three ones that I've finished since last time. So I've, so far I've pretty much read one book for each month. Uh, obviously I'm at uh, six out of 16 challenges at this point. Um, so I have read one per month and I would like to during the summer to read a few extra so that I can continue with a one per month in the autumn and winter. So I've chosen all of the ones that I would like to read throughout the summer and those are the ones that I'm going to show you now. First we have Soviet Space Dogs by uh, Olesya Turkina and this is obviously a book about Soviet space dogs. It is, I think, taking a specific look at the uh, sort of the stories around the Soviet space dogs, the narratives and the way that they were used as symbols for other space pro programs and I am going to be using this for the challenge of reading a uh, non-fiction book that is in translation. This was translated by Inna Cannon and Lisa Wasserman. So there's that. So in the following books you will probably see that I sort of bend on the rules of the non-fiction challenge and mainly I think that um, I like uh, having these challenges to push me but also I don't really like any rules so I always end up um, either bending them or breaking them. Uh, so yeah, I think in this in this case I've probably mostly bent bent them. Um, but the uh, next one I have is Van Gogh's Ear, the True Story by Bernadette Murphy. So I was planning to use this for art history, but I decided to change that. So instead, I am going to be using this for the challenge of reading a book and then watching a documentary uh, about the same topic or around the same topic. Uh, so I am planning to watch Loving Vincent, um, which is a basically an animated biography. I've already watched about 20 minutes of the movie and it's so fantastic. The animation of it is uh, using hand paintings um, to create a similar style 
to Van Gogh's own work in telling his story. So I thought that I really wanted to watch that movie and I thought it would be a, the perfect complement to reading this book. So I will be using this book for the read a book and then watch a documentary. So the next one I have is the one that I'm bending the rules for and that is Balladen om Marie Kröjer uh, by Anastasia Arnold. I think this is a Danish author and it is a biography of Marie Kröjer who was married to a man called P.S. Kröjer uh, who was apparently one of the most well-known um, or esteemed um, painters of his times. So I think that they were sort of, their heyday was in the turn of the century I'm choosing this for the art history challenge because uh, it is about um, the wife of a really famous painter and I don't think that this is going to be looking only about his art or the art scene although that is definitely a part of it it seems um, because she was married first to this painter and then um, she was also later married to a music composer uh, so I'm, I'm getting the sense that this is sort of both a biography of this historical figure and her relationships with these two men but also looking at the uh, sort of the historical times in Scandinavia at this time and I that is the reason that I was intrigued by this one uh, so I'm using this for the art history for now and we shall see if it, if there's enough art history in this book to warrant that uh, otherwise I will just pick something else because I have a lot of books that I would love to read for um, in terms of art history um, then we have read a book about something ordinary and for that I've chosen The Lonely City by Olivia Lang and I think um, what is more ordinary than being lonely or being being alone. Both of those things, although they are definitely different things. It is um, talking about loneliness and I think in particular through art, um, focusing on art. So it may be even fitting with the art history. Both this and I Am, I Am, I Am are two books that have been, that have been really hyped on booktube and that I've been really wanting to read for a long time. And since I loved I Am, I Am, I Am, I'm hoping that I will also love this one. Um, then we have a read a book on a read a micro history of an object. So again, I'm bending on the rules, but you know, that's just going to be the the mantra throughout this challenge. My choice for this one is Word by Word uh, by Corey Stomper, The Secret Life of Dictionaries. So this is a memoir of the author working for the Webster this would be sort of a micro history of an object being the dictionary itself. Um, obviously it is a memoir so it's not really a history and uh, it's slim enough not to be that really uh, in-depth uh, look w that I associate with a micro history but I'm just gonna go with it because I am really intrigued by the the process of creating a dictionary especially in our modern times when we have access to things like the internet and there's just the the way we use dictionaries is so different now uh, in comparison to um, in comparison to historical times. And the last one I have chosen for the summer uh, TBR for the nonfiction challenge is Spirals in Time, The Secret Life and Curious Afterlife of Seashells by Helen Scales. <clears throat> so again, I am probably bending on my own rules. Um, I am going to be choosing this one for pop science. So I think I mentioned in the announcement video that I was planning to use a non-natural history for the uh, for the pop science since I do read quite a lot of natural history on my own. I wanted the challenge to be um, pushing me outside of my comfort zone. However, this is, I think, still outside of my comfort zone even though it is sort of <laughs> in the natural histories um, because it's about mollusks and I thought that it would be interesting, especially in relation to some other books that I've been reading recently. So I'm currently reading uh, The Soul of an Octopus that also talks about the mollusk um, life form. And um, I've also read quite a few things sur surrounding fossils lately. And I think I'm more interested in this kind of thing now than I've ever been before. Seashells are the sculpted homes of a remarkable group of animals, the mollusks. Uh, these are some of the most ancient and successful animals on the planet and they have fascinating tales to tell. For me this is outside my comfort zone because usually when I've read um, natural history it's been about clear life forms like 
um, species that I can recognize or about nature that I can recognize, that I can see. Uh, but this is like, it feels like something, reading about something set in space uh, because I know nothing about what's underneath the water horizons. But I also thought that it might work as a pre-Victorian history since uh, the description also said that these are ancient life forms. Uh, I might shift uh, my choice of challenge for this one when I've read it. I might find that the other one is more suitable. So these are the ones that I'm hoping to read in the summer and Obviously, I've created a challenge for myself. I'm also currently doing the Wainwright long list reading, um, but I didn't want to overlap those because the whole idea for me with a nonfiction challenge was to um, to make me read new things and um, to make me read more uh, of nonfiction that there is there that there is out there. Uh, so it was sort of defeat the purpose for me to use those books. I hope that if you've been doing the nonfiction reading challenge, that you've been enjoying. It. Uh, I would love to know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, or if you have any recommendations for me based on these books. I would also love to know that. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!